Alright, no oil pressure. That's always a good sign, right? Or hardly any oil pressure. Like the last video I mentioned, guys, the bearings took a shit kicking. Um, and this is, this is my, how would I say this? This is my guess as to what happened. I am assuming that I had a bunch of wideband problems, right? So I had the AM wideband. The K-Pro has a preset in it so that you can read uh, the tables that the wideband has preset um, so you can run closed loop. So the K-Pro will adjust the fuel tables according to what the wideband sensor is telling it. The K-Pro was not doing that for whatever reason. The software is glitch. It's not doing it properly. And we tried and tried to scale the fuel back and it just kept, it was like 10 AFR already rich and it was adding another 18%. It, touched, it kept trying to add 18%. So it was over fueling like crazy. Um, and then I decided to wire in my own primary O2 because the dumbass that made my wiring harness decided it wouldn't be uh, good enough to put in uh, a primary O2 sensor plug um, I mean the wires are already there. Why didn't you just fucking put one in? So I had to wire all that myself put a relay in it took a little while for me to figure that out But it ended up working. So then that's when the car actually started running and I was doing proper e-tunes um, And small poles, but then I got an oil pressure light and then there was kind of a ticking knocking noise I wasn't really sure what it was and so that's why I installed the oil pressure sensor or the gauge and my theory is that because it overfueled so much I got some fuel blow by I guess if that would be the proper term and it diluted the oil because if I put my hand in the oil that I drained it feels like water and like there's shavings in it and it kind of smells like fuel so I think it diluted the oil to the point of no lubrication and it just messed up the uh, rod bearings, right? That's a theory. That's pretty much the only theory I have at this point because I looked at the oil pump, the oil pump's fine. It's not clogged, it's not, I took the plunger out, everything's fine, so. And I don't see any passages blocked, so. It's K24, K20 time. This was my original plan from the start. So in this box, I have all the parts that I already removed. I just put them in a tub so that they're nice and safe. They're not going to get scratched. They're in a clean environment. And this is a K24 A2 06 out of an automatic TSX. So I know it hasn't been abused. It's from Toronto. It has highway mileage at this point, 170 or no, 179 kilometers. Um, the only thing that happened was the belt got uh, a little bit shredded when the front end got caved in from the TSX. But uh, came with all the accessories, harness, everything. So I'm just going to sell the head. So it has 06 plus TSX cams, which people like. Those are like the your bang for your buck cam. Um, I'll sell all the accessories. I don't need them. I might keep the alternator. And uh, yeah, take the block. Take the head. And there you go. Frank build. Alright, so essentially what I've done so far is release the tensioners, just two 10 mil bolts. And then I re release the, um, or I took off the guide on this side, it's just three 10 mils. And then on top you have two 12 mils, this one's, you're going to need a deep socket, and this one's just a shallow, um, to take the top guide off for the chain. And then you should be able to just take your chain off. Oh, I had set the engine at TDC first, um, just so I had a feel for it, um, but yeah which would be these two marks here um, are supposed to line up and then this uh, this arrow here is supposed to line up with this arrow here it's hard to see there's an arrow right there, it's supposed to line up with that one and then these two marks here so you should be able to just pull this chain off all of this is brand new, the guy that I bought this off, he redid all the guides, the chain the tensioner all that, but I don't think I can reuse it because K24 chains longer. I think I can reuse a guide, but I'm getting a different tensioner, even though it's pretty much brand new. But um, yeah, so the next step now is to remove the cams. So the way you're going to do this is the cam caps. 
um, but you don't want to mix these up at all. They are, they are numbered uh, five, four, three, two, and one. But don't mix up the um, direction. And then so you also don't want to mix up the bolts, I believe. Um, keep the bolts in the same spots. Um, and you want to take them off in the opposite pattern that you installed them in. So this is uh, one and two, I believe, or one and two. And then it would be like three, four, five, six or something. But you, you're going to start from the outside, whatever. you got to find the spec online. Um, boom, 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 and then the middle. Because if you do it from the middle, it'll probably break your cams. <laughs> and then you're going to be pretty pissed off. So, yeah. Okay, so I have a diagram here for the cam caps. This is uh, the loosening sequence. So you're going to start at one in the middle, and then two is on the uh, right side here at the top. Then three is the left, or sorry, still the right at the bottom. And then uh, four on the left side. You see all the way to 22, I believe, 22 bolts. Um, so just follow that and you should be okay. All right, so the sequence that I gave you guys, right, um, being start here one, right, and then two, three, right? Well, I just reverse the sequence now. So now this is the proper sequence to put the bolts in to tighten them. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten, you know what I mean? I just reversed the, the um, untorquing sequence. So now this, is, this sequence would be you putting bolts in. And for me, I don't really like doing the whole stick the bolt in the cardboard thing, so I'm going to tape them all because this is a better format for me. So every time I take a bolt out, I'm going to tape it um, so I know exactly where it's going to go. You know, you put the cardboard on the shelf and fuck, somebody moves it or it falls down and then you're screwed, right? Okay, so this is really tedious. You have to put, well, beneficial to put, Jesus, uh, zip ties on here so that it locks these three together. Um, there's pins and springs in these. Um, and if you don't lock these together and you lift one of these faster than the other one, or, you know, just lift one, the fucking spin, the, the pin and the spring will literally just fly out. Um, then you'll have a fun time finding them and putting them back in. Luckily, none of mine came out. These ones are harder because you can't get the zip tie in between this wall and the lobe. Um, so I put two here and then one on the front to kind of lock them together. Um, so yeah, this is, and then when you pick this up, you want to put one hand here and one here and like squeeze together so that none of it falls apart um, and just set it down somewhere. And then you'll be ready to take the, the head bolts out. All right, so after you have your rocker assembly off, now you can move on to uh, your head studs or your bolts, I mean. Um, and they have to come off in the opposite order that they go in. So you'd start here on the um, timing chain side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I had to check, I forgot which one was which. Um, so yeah, you'd have to take them off in that sequence and then they just go back in the opposite sequence. Um, I would never probably reuse these. Um, you have to do like a bunch of measurements to make sure they're not stretched in like three different places or something. Um, so ARP it is for that. And uh, yeah, so once you get the head off, just set it down somewhere. And uh, that's pretty much it for that, but I guess. So, you know, typical whatever. Once you get all your head bolts out, you literally just grab um, you just grab these, one hand here and one hand on the other one, and you just pull up, and it's super easy. Then the head gasket will just flop off or whatever. But that's that. So that's pretty much uh, that part's dealt with. It's getting a little chilly, so I think I'm gonna pick this up when I have warmer clothes on. But the next thing is. Take this off, take the oil cooler off, I'm going to put it on the K24. I'm going to use the water pump because that's the only way to use the oil cooler. Um, then like that's pretty much it. Take my thermostat off, the alternator, 
this whole piece. This is going to be a bare block. I'll probably just see if somebody wants to buy it and they can build it up if they want. But, I don't know. That's going to be cheap, I guess. Alright, so I'm just going to take the water pump um, housing assembly off. I believe it's just this one stud, which is a nut. There's a bolt here. One here, one here. I'm not sure about this one. I think that's it, really. You gotta take the alternator off first, which is just uh, one, two, three bolts here. And that's it. Alright, so boom, then you get that off. I think it's just the four bolts that I was highlighting, and the one nut. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought. It's completely aluminum, so. Um, probably take my brand new knock sensor off. Um, the flywheel's gotta come off at some point when the engine's off here. I'll end up putting the oil pan back up. I'm gonna leave this pump on here. I'll just buy a brand new pump. Now I gotta take all this, the rest of the cooling line, uh, oil cooler lines off. And that's pretty much it, I think. Other than that, like everything else is gonna stay on. But. So I took my oil pressure sensor out. That's super easy. Um, and then for this, you just take the oil filter off, and then you're gonna have to get a, um, well, I have a 30 that fits. Um, I'm not sure what the standard size would be. Um, so yeah, take that off, and then this whole oil cooler assembly should come off. Um, and then you just have a 10 mil here for this fitting. And then I think I'm done with this thing.